Hello again, as we continue with linear momentum, in particular the second section, which is applications on Newton's second law. In this section, we apply Newton's second law in two dimensions. That might require some knowledge of differential equations and integrals from mathematics. We're going to talk about that before we start solving an exercise. Let's get started. A simple action of a basketball player shooting the ball towards the rim. It's a simple projectile problem as we have seen it before. How would you treat a projectile using linear momentum and Newton's second law? This is going to be the main part of this section in which we apply the knowledge of linear momentum along with our knowledge concerning projectiles to come up with a solution to this type of exercise. Before we start with the physics of a basketball and applying linear momentum, we need to use some ideas from mathematics. Let's make sure that we have seen them properly. Whether you've covered them in mathematics before or not, we'll just take a note about it. Notations of derivative. When you write a derivative, we have different ways of writing it. Some people use the Leibniz notation, dy by dx. The advantage of this notation is that it shows that the principal variable x, shown in the denominator, and the dependent variable y, which is in the numerator. We all know that y is usually given as a function of x. So when you write dy by dx, you are deriving y with respect to variable x. Another notation is the Lagrange notation, which simply uses y prime, y double prime, etc. Don't forget, y prime is the same as dy by dx. I'm not going to complicate things, but we need to know that these are two different notations. Now, what we use a lot in physics is the dot notation, which is known as Newton notation, dy by dt. So whenever you use y dot, that means you are deriving with respect to time. In physics, while deriving relative to time, we can use y dot. That's what you just said. Now, differential equations. A differential equation is an equation including the derivative of a function and the function itself. It is essential to specify the main variable. How's that? If I say y prime equals to 2, as if I'm asking myself, what is the function that upon deriving I get 2? The first thing that someone would ask is, you are deriving with respect to what? So if I am to derive a function, we always ask derive with respect to x. So yes, in order to answer the derivative question, I need to specify the variable. And in order to solve the anti-derivative thing, I need to identify my main variable. OK, let's move on. The easiest differential equation that one can think about is y prime equals to k, where k is a constant. In order to solve it, you don't need to go into a complicated notation. Simply ask yourself mentally, what do I derive to get k? Let's say k is 2 or 3 or whatever. So yes, what do I derive to get k? Before you answer, you would think about the variable. Yes, upon deriving, I get k. But what am I deriving with respect to? Is it x? Is it y? Is it time t? Because we know that. Derivatives happen like that. So let's go to mathematics. Mainly in mathematics, the main derivative is x. So what do, you, what do I derive in x to get k? Directly, I come up mentally with kx. So yes, kx derived gives k. But I can also add a constant here. There might be a constant, and that constant upon deriving cancels out. So this is a mental solution of a differential equation. So the solution is going to be y equals k times x plus constant. Now, before you ask about the constant, in order to evaluate that constant, I need some value or values for x and y. To find the constant, use a given condition where x and y are specified. If that condition is not given, we just keep it as constant. This concept is known as primitives or antiderivatives. We didn't mention it here yet. We proceed. 
if we use the Leibniz notation in which we have dy by dx equals to k, not y prime, to solve it, we get more mathematical and more procedural. We start writing equations. Over here, what you should do is separate the variables. How's that? Treat dy by dx as if it were a fraction. Then cross multiply to get dy equals k times dx. Now, dy and dx are differentials, meaning there are small uh, variations of y and x. I will not go into the mathematics of showing these dy and dx, but they are related to derivatives. So the best thing you can think about is that they are related to derivatives. In order to extract the functions out of these, we apply the antiderivative. Always think about it just like squaring and square root. We apply square root whenever we have square to get rid of it. We apply square whenever we have square root to get rid of it. So when you have differentials or derivatives and you want to get rid of a derivative, use antiderivative. Okay, which is symbolized by the symbol integral. So we integrate on both sides. We have integral dy equals integral k dx. Now, what do I derive? With respect to y to get 1, it is simply either x or y or whatever. But the main variable is y. So yes, anti-deriving this is y. What do I derive to get k constant but in x this time? It is kx just as we talked and said before. So if I proceed here, we will get y equals kx plus constant being the solution. We say this is the solution of the differential equation. In physics, instead of using dy with respect to dx, we write dy by dt. But we proceed accordingly the same way. dy equals k times dt, integrate, so we get y equals kt plus y0. A nice addition in physics is that y equals kt plus constant, right? If time equals to 0, then y equals to constant. That y at 0, right? This is what we call the initial value, right? Or initial condition. So what's nice in physics is that when you integrate, you get the function plus the constant is directly the initial value of that parameter or quantity that you are determining. Now, a reminder about the basic integral that we use a lot is the golden rule in which we have integral of x to the power m dx, pay attention, we are anti-deriving of x or anti-deriving x relative to x. It gives x to power m plus 1 over m plus 1 plus the constant, given that m is not equal to minus 1. Now, when m equals to minus 1, we have new functions, etc. We have loads of equations that you can apply in differential, in differential equations. However, for the time being, the simplest one is when y prime equals to constant and the methods to solve. Right now, we can skip the math part and move to the physics of projectiles simply studying projectiles using linear momentum a basketball of mass 0.5 kilogram is shot from point a towards the basket the ball's initial velocity is 12 meters per second along a direction of 25 degrees with the horizontal give the components of the initial linear momentum of the ball applying newton's second law Determine the time expressions of Px and Py. Deduce the time expressions of the velocity components Vx and Vy. Let's start by solving this part or this exercise. Then we can project a neat solution. In the first part, we are supposed to find the initial momentum, P0. In order to find P0, first we recall that momentum is m times v mass m being scalar v is a vector so directly i know that p0 which is the initial linear momentum is mv0 it's nothing but the mass multiplied by the initial velocity the initial velocity is a vector so in order to understand it well and know what should be done i will draw this vector in the x y reference frame which is given point a is shown here and I have the initial velocity as an ascending vector drawn here. Now, I'm not going to consider any angle here, which is 25 degrees in fact. 
I'll call it alpha. To make things easier, I'll use also color codes in which I'll decompose or the triangle of decomposition in which we show the components X and Y is to be shown in red color. This part is V0X and this is V0Y. Now, for those who are good with projection, this might be a bit simple. And it is. Now, for those who find problems with it, let's talk about it in detail. To use projection, or in, for, in fact, to find out the components, we can use either the sine or the cosine of the angle. Sine angle alpha is the opposite over, a jace, over the hypotenuse. So if I apply this in this figure, I get that sine alpha is the opposite, which is V0Y over V0, this one. So V0Y becomes V0 sine alpha. Since V0Y is upwards and Y is oriented upwards, therefore it's positive. In brief, if I decompose P0 vector into two parts, P0 on X and P0 on Y, on X I have M V0 on X, which is M V0 cosine alpha, and P0Y is going to be M V0Y, which is M V0 sine alpha. Continuing with numbers, 0 0.5, P is 12, and cosine 25. Over here we have 0 0.5 into 12 into sine 25. So, grouping all ideas together, P0, or in fact grouping all values together, P0x is equal to approximately 3.5.4 kilogram meter per second. And on y axis we have P0y being around 2.5 kilogram meter per second. And that's it. Now, moving to part two, which is determine the components Px and Py. Again, how would you find components here? The question specifies use Newton's second law. So first step, I will write Newton's second law. By Newton's second law, which is indicated, summation of F external equals to Ma or equal to dp by dt as we know it now, right? So we no longer use ma. So summation of f external equals to dp by dt. It equals ma, but it's beyond our scope now because what we need to focus on is how to determine the momentum. Okay, what is the external force acting? So the external force acting is on the weight, right? And weight in this case, where weight is what? Where weight vector is minus mgj. If you look at the figure here, weight is pulling down. Okay, that's weight. And y is upwards, uh, increasing upwards as positive. That means we have a negative weight vector. So if I go to this equation, I'll get implies or so minus mg along j equals to dp vector by dt. I have now a vector relation and a vector differential equation that needs to be solved. In order to solve it, I will go once on x and once on y just to make things easier. Along x, if I take this along x, which, is, which can fit over here, okay? 0 equals dpx by dt. Chew on that a bit and check it. Zero on the left side because we have no I component. It's only J. Okay? And on the right-hand side, no, it's simply DP vector, which has PX and PY components. So DPX by DT. Now ask yourselves mentally, what do you derive in time T to get zero? It should be constant. Implies P of X equals to constant which is, as we know, P0x. When the momentum is constant and it starts with P0x on x-axis, it would remain like that. So yes, we found P, Px or P0x. We'll keep that. At the end, we're going to group both ideas together. Now, to continue with Py, first we'll go back to the same equation, which was minus mg j equals to dp vector by dt. Now, my intention is to go 
towards the y-axis, so along y or along j, it's the same thing, we have minus mg equals dpy by dt. Now, since it equals to constant, and we said when we use the Lagrange, the Leibniz uh, form, we separate variable, so we have dpy equals minus mg dt. Or simply ask yourselves, if a function has the derivative being a constant, what is that function? Whether you intend to use derivatives or antiderivatives, integration and continue or use mental math, it's the same thing, or mental derivation if you want to call it. So here we apply integral, so we get integral dpy equals minus mg dt, and we also integrate here. I'll write the minus outside. What do I derive to get 1 in y? In py, it's simply py equals minus mgt for the same reason plus constant. And we know that this constant is py at time 0, which we called before p0y. So we have py being what? Minus mgt plus p0y, which you already found. However, if we take this, from this point here, minus mg equals py prime, just to make things easier, and ask yourselves, what do I derive to get minus mg? Ask yourself this question. So I know that I should have here minus gt plus constant. Minus mgt plus constant. So I can directly say py equals minus mgt plus the constant, as we always say, is p0y. This solution is accepted as mathematics, and the other one also. The one which is shown on the left-hand side is simply applications of primitives and differential equation solutions. The other one is the same thing, but we are doing things more mentally. So instead of writing the symbol of integrals, I'm directly thinking about the value which is integrated like that. Or in fact, or rather say, the function that produces this result. Okay, last part is to find, I'll squeeze it here, to find the components of velocity deduced from the momentum. How is that? Now, since p vector is mv vector, then obviously v vector is p vector over m. Thus, we have two components. Vx is px over m, which is, we have px up, px is p0x, which is 5.4 over 0 0.5 and we have vy which equals minus mgt plus p0y which is 2.5 if I'm not mistaken if I'm not mistaken over 0 0.5 okay so the remaining part is just calculation I won't go into there let's go check the solution which is typed so everything that we talked about decomposition by geometry of the figure cosine and sine Okay, P0x is 5.4, P0 on Y is 2.54. Now, moving on to the second part, which is to find the components on X and Y. Okay, the only force acting is weight, which is minus mgj. dp by dt equals minus mgj is the same relation that we got here. From here on, we can either go to X axis alone and Y axis alone and do mental math or simply follow as written here. Along x, dpx by t is 0, then px is constant. Along y, we did integrals, and we got the same answer. Finally, to find v, we divide p by m, and here is the result. Okay? So this is simply what we have done so far. As an application to check whether you've grasped what we have discussed or not, try to solve this exercise. As we always do, at the end, we might add a session including the solution of all these exercises with all details now to wrap things up let's go back to the initial example that we have talked about which is about basketball in fact not only projectiles and forces are studied with momentum in basketball the player's momentum is of major importance by itself how is that when a player is running the momentum of that player should be taken into consideration whenever he wants to attempt a jump shot or if he crashes into another player or anything else because it controls his shots, dribbling, fouls, layups, and everything else. 
Thank you for the time that you've spent in this session. Again, in this session, we focused a lot on the mathematics used with Newton's second law along with momentum. Okay, repeat it if you have any ideas which you find hard. If not, move on to the upcoming session. I'll see you then.